understand that uh, we have people still coming in. So if you just give me a moment, I will um, start proceedings shortly when, uh, when our technical person will highlight for me that, you know, that we've got the majority of people um, attending. The good news is that we have 122 people registered for today's webinar, uh, which is another great response. Uh, many of you were with us when we had the webinar in June, uh, which was very well received. So this is a follow-up to the, the, the June uh, event. We'll have another one in November, and then we'll have a special webinar in December, which I'll, I'll talk about shortly. So if you just uh, wait one or two uh, moments, and uh, very shortly we'll start the, the webinar. Thank you. Okay, um, we're ready to get started. Um, I've just had a quick look in the chat room and I can't believe Maureen um, that you're, you're joined us. Uh, Maureen and I work together. Um, let's be kind Maureen and just say some years ago uh, in what was then the College of Marketing and Design in um, Mountjoy Square, which has obviously gone to become Dublin Institute of Technology and later became, uh, or more recently became technological, sorry, it went on to become Dublin Institute of Technology and then Technological University of Dublin. Um, Maureen, it's wonderful to connect with you again after, um, after a number of years, let's just say. Um, I'll also see there's an email there, you know, difficulties with passwords. Um, I, what I'll do is, when I get the, the meeting started, um, I'll send an email out again to, to people um, that might be struggling to, 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 to log in. Uh, all right, so let's get started. And you're all very welcome uh, it, to the second in the series. And really what I want to talk about today, and what, or what we want to talk about, is, is to provide information to you that if you're interested in starting your own business uh, or becoming kind of self-employed in some way, what kind of supports are available to you to help you get started? Now, what I want to be really clear about is today is not a day that we're going to examine um, the quantity or quality of what's, been, of what's available. We're not going to discuss whether more should be done, okay? Um, where, where government or, or government departments or agencies, um, you know, could improve upon their, their, their services. That's not for today, okay? I promise you we will have another day where we will debate, you know, where government and its agencies could, could further support um, self-employment for people with disabilities. Um, but that's not the purpose of today. Today is purely about um, providing information to you regarding what supports currently exist. And we've got wonderful speakers that will inform you about all of that. Uh, just a couple of notes before we, we get started. Um, we are recording the session and we will make the link to the recording available to you afterwards. So if you happen to miss any of it, um, don't worry. Um, the link will be available from tomorrow and we'll send you um, 
we'll send you the link of the recording. We are only recording um, the, the introductions and the speakers. We're not recording the, the Q&A session afterwards, okay, because um, we want to keep that private. Okay, so any questions you might have that you're sending to us by, by chat or audio, okay, that's going to be private and will not be part of the recording session. When we come to the Q&A, there'll be the opportunity for you to ask questions in one of two ways. You can either um, write a question in the chat room and, and I'll call it out to the speakers, or for the last um, five, six minutes, we're going to open it up to audio questions and it'll, you'll get the opportunity to ask a question by, by raising your hand digitally. So there's an icon on the screen that you raise your hand and then we'll come to you and invite you to speak. Um, and we're gonna have that opportunity as well. Uh, also by way of introduction, can I thank um, the Dubson um, Department of Business, Enterprise and Innovation who's heavily supported um, this initiative. It's part of the Dublin Regional Enterprise Plan to 2020 uh, under objective five. Uh, so again, thanks to, to all involved in the Dublin Regional Enterprise Plan um, and particularly to its coordinating secretary, Declan McCulloch, um, and to Open Doors Initiative, who are the technical hosts for, for, for this event and also will be hosting the uh, recording afterwards. So it's to their website you will be going. Um, also, just by way of final guidelines, can I just say, um, with regard to the speakers, they cannot answer individual questions, okay? That just won't be possible. Um, so if you've got a query about your particular circumstance, today is not the day to be answering that question, okay? But we will, hopefully provide you with enough information that will guide you as to where you can go to get your individual question answered. Okay, um, so that's it. Before we get started, let me explain something about the initiative. Um, we had one in June, okay, um, debating you know, about the challenges facing people um, getting started. Today is about who is supporting people with disabilities who are wishing to become self-employed. In November, we're having another webinar. Um, and again, it's related to enterprise agencies and how they help, okay, the, the state enterprise agencies and how they help uh, people with disabilities start their own business. And then on December 3rd, we have a very special workshop and it's open only to people with disability and it's open only to those people who've attended either today's webinar or, or, or November's webinar. And this workshop is called the, it's from the I Am Remarkable initiative, uh, which is, it's a, it's a worldwide initiative um, that's led by Google. And in Ireland, it is um, led by uh, Yulia Chrisan. And Yulia is with us, and Yulia is just going to explain what's going to happen on December 3rd. Uh, it's going to be limited to a maximum of 30 people, and uh, the applications for that won't, you know, will not open until after the next webinar has been completed. So, Yulia, would you uh, please join us and, and talk to me about? Uh, the I Am Remarkable initiative and explain to people who are watching um, what you're doing. Thank you so much, Tom. Yes. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, delighted to be here. My name is Julia. Uh, I've been working at Google for almost seven years now. I currently am an international growth manager, but I'm not here to talk about international growth. In my day-to-day -day job, I also lead a cup and sponsor a couple of really cool initiatives around coaching, diversity, and personal development. And I'm really happy to come um, share a couple of things about the I Am Remarkable initiatives. Um, I'm an I Am Remarkable facilitator and I lead the, um, for Ireland, so I only lead the nonprofit uh, part of I Am Remarkable. We have a wider initiative. So what is I Am Remarkable? It's a Google initiative, as Tom said, empowering women and other underrepresented groups to celebrate 
their uh, achievements in the workplace and beyond. Um, this initiative started in 2015 as a Google initiative. Initially, it was meant for women and focused only on empowering women to talk more openly about their accomplishments in the workplace. And um, we slowly realized that um, the, the issues weren't specific just to women and they apply to a lot of underrepresented group, be it um, due to uh, gender, to uh, ethnicity, uh, ability and, and so on. So we opened up the, the program to beyond Google and uh, since 2015 we have uh, delivered more than 140,000 workshops in more than 130 countries led by 7,000 facilitators both internally at Google and external facilitators. So in December as Tom said I will be delivering a 90 minutes workshop where you will learn the importance of self-promotion both in your personal and professional life and be equipped with tools to develop the, these skills. You will be invited to challenge those social perceptions around self-promotion. So our workshop will um, have those two main objectives. One, improve self-promotion motivation and skills for any underrepresented groups and challenge the social perception around self-promotion. So I'm very excited and look forward to the workshop in December. And thank you again, Tom, for um, introducing me. Ilya, you're most welcome, and, and thank you so much for um, your your tremendous support and, and willingness to collaborate with us. I, I just think um, the work that you're doing is fabulous, and look forward to that workshop. And again, I'll remind people, it's, it's just limited to a maximum of 30 people. Um, it's open only to people with disability, and so people who work in advocacy organizations, for example, um, will not be able to attend. Um, just just going kind of to clarify that because it's 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 a dedicated event. Um, so um, thank you, Julia, um, so much, and look forward to talking with you very shortly again on that. Um, so now I'm delighted to welcome um, making her debut in these webinar series is Audrey McParlin. Um, Audrey's with the Department of Employment Affairs and Social um, Protection, and basically what we've asked. Audrey to talk about is the supports that are available to people who are looking to set up their own business. Um, and I do realize that there's lots of challenges for self her own self-employment and her own access to, to um, benefits. Um, but let's get some clarity around what's available and how self-employment might actually affect you in terms of, of income. So Audrey, you're very welcome, and I'm going to hand over to you. Tom, Tom, thanks very much for the introduction and for inviting me to participate in the webinar. And hello to everybody out there that's uh, looking in. Um, if somebody had said to me six months ago that I'd be working in my kitchen on a laptop and doing a webinar, I wouldn't have believed it. Now, I know this uh, certainly doesn't replace their personal contact, but uh, technology does have its, ben its benefits, like in these challenging times. So as Tom mentioned, I've been asked to give an overview of the grants and supports that our department has for people with a disability, and in particular, the supports avail available for somebody starting, you know, or considering undertaking on, uh, self-employment. So to begin with, the first thing I'm going to talk about is the Back to Work Enterprise Allowance Scheme. And this aims to encourage participants to take up self-employment by providing the guaranteed income for the first two years of their business. So how do you get onto this scheme? Well, to access it, you would first need to go through your local intro office. And with things being at the air, as they are at the moment with COVID, it's best to make contact with your local office by either telephone or email. And they could arrange for a case officer to make contact back with you so that you could discuss the back to work enterprise allowance option. Now, there is some eligibility criteria for this scheme. For example, there is an age limit on it it's only payable up to a person 66 to 30. And a person must be on a, a qualifying payment for a minimum amount of time, which would be nine months. Now, but if somebody spent time on community employment and training, things like that, they would all count. As with the Back to Work Enterprise Allowance as well, in the July job stimulus, this was also opened out to people who might be in the seat of the COVID PUP payment. So this could be of interest to any of your friends or family who are also in that situation. 
with the back to work enterprise allowance, it needs to be a new business idea. So for example, it couldn't be a franchise or a business that was already operating. So it's not a case of you buying a business or taking over pre-existing business because they wouldn't be classed as a new, a new business idea. But once the case officer is satisfied that you as the customer are enterprise ready and that you don't need further training prior to being self-applied, the case officer will make a, a referral to an enterprise officer so that the enterprise officer can mentor you and to help you uh, develop your business plan. Following on from the development of the, your business plan, the enterprise officer then makes a recommendation back to DEASP on whether it's, it's likely that it's a viable option. Now, the next speaker, speaker that's coming up after me, Larry from South uh, Dublin Partnership, he's going to cover all those services in more detail. But once you're accepted onto the scheme, you're, you're now on the back to work enterprise loan payment rather than your original claim payment, whether you were on JA, job seekers or disability, whatever. So the, the participant, you know, you get uh, approval in writing and then you can avail of the supports. So the main support is obviously the, the weekly payment. Now, the weekly payment remains at 100% of the full value of your original payment for one year, but it then tapers to 75% in the second year. Now, the back to work enterprise allowance payment is not subject to tax or PRSI, but your income from self employment could be uh, subject to tax or PRSI. There's the potential re retention of secondary benefits, including medical card, providing that a person continues to meet the uh, appropriate means test. Now, my department, Department of Employment Affairs, we don't have any control over the, the, the medical cards being tested. That's, as you know, that's the HSE. My understanding of it is that a person could have a maximum combined income of €427 Euro per week and still retain their medical card. Now, recipients of invalidity pension and disability allowance, they can still retain the household package, benefits package for the two years of the back to work enterprise allowance. Now, as most people will know, there's going to be a new budget announced next week and who knows what changes there might be in the budget and that could have an impact on what we're discussing today because I'm, I'm certainly not in on any of them talks so I don't know what's going to come out in the budget. But for anybody who has gone on to, uh, to the back to work, you know, basically really they're giving up their DA but they can still retain their free travel for five years. There is ongoing support and advice from your case officer because they do have review meetings with you to check in to see how your business is, is going. And also then the enterprise officer that you would you know, have met with to do your business plan, they would be available as well for help for mentoring and things like that. But as I said earlier, Larry's going to talk more about that. There are enterprise support grants as well for people who are on this particular scheme. And the value of them, it's up to two and a half thousand euro over the two years of the scheme. And they're there to help with the start of costs. So for example, there's a variety of things that could be covered. Maybe for your business, you might need public liability insurance. You might need help with accountancy or legal advice, perhaps advertising and marketing equipment. You need to get your business registered, get your website done. They're all, this would be classed as startup costs. Now there are annual limits on the different categories of them, um, costs that are out there. And for example, the public liability insurance, the maximum on any year that, that is available would be a thousand euro. And there is a contribution also required from, from the applicant as well. But apart from the back to work enterprise allowance, another option that might suit somebody, you know, who may be, you know, considering being self-employed might be for them to remain under DA but apply for the, the earnings disregard instead. As you know, some of you probably know this, but it is means tested and how it operates is, is that the first 120 euros of your earnings is disregarded and then 50% of your earnings between 100 euro and 350 are also disregarded for the purpose of the means test. Now, depending on a person's individual situation and everyone is going to be different, this might be a suitable option because it's not limited to a particular period of time, the way that the back to work enterprise allowance is. And then even for somebody on invalidity pension, partial capacity might also be a viable option. For anybody who has a disability, whether they're self-employed or employed by a private company, and if they're working for a minimum of eight hours a week, they can also apply for the Work Equipment Adaptation Grant. So this grant aims to support any additional costs that are related to the disability. Like it's not for the setting up of a business, it's for the other things outside that. So for example, it might be for um, maybe minor building modifications, 
maybe, there, maybe there's adaptive equipment needed, like a voice synthesizer with the computer, maybe a special chair, maybe um, special software. So grants like these, they're all covered by the case officers in your local intro office. With the way that technology progresses, like there's new type of equipment being developed all the time that can assist. And if needed, the case officer can look for professional advice from a qualified individual or maybe a different agency for a recommendation in relation to the equipment or adaptions. And this is to make sure that we're getting the most appropriate or the most relevant equipment for the, for the individual. So how much is available on that particular scheme? Well, at the moment, the limit is 6,350. Now, if you, you know, the equipment that you bought was specific um, IT equipment, you need somebody to show you how to do that. You know, so if specialist training is needed for any of the assistive technology, the amount goes up to a maximum limit of, uh, I don't know why they make these such odd numbers, but which they do, it's 9,523 euros, okay? Now these grants are paid less than VAT. So if you're self-employed and registered for VAT, you can claim that back from the revenue commissioners. If you're working for a company, they can claim that back as well. So really, I'd, I've really only just covered the grants that are available for somebody looking to be self-employed. In conclusion, there are options available. A scheme that's going to suit one person might not be relevant for another one. But it is very worthwhile, in the very least, to have a conversation about what's available and to work out which option is likely to be the most advantageous to you, taking into consideration your own particular circumstances. It can be a big step, and I do understand that people have a lot to think about. For example, somebody's current medical needs, possibly their future medical needs, and your, like your possible earnings, the impact on your medical card. There really is a lot to consider, and it's not a case of one size is going to fit all. The information on all the schemes you have are now on the combined www.gov.ie, and that includes everything, including the other grants for people with a disability, whether it's the reader grant, the interpreter grant, the wage subsidy scheme, you know, and also on the gov.ie is the contact details for all the local intro offices. I've also provided Tom with an email address where anybody who's watching the, uh, the, this session here today has a particular query. They can contact the, myself and the team where I work and my, myself and my colleagues can get back to you. And really, I prefer to answer the questions with the benefit of maybe to fact check before I give an, you know, an off-the-cuff response that mightn't be. 100%. And in the event that uh, somebody's watching a recording of this uh, webinar at a later stage, you know, they should check the figures in case there's any changes. You know, after, you know, when you're recorded, it's relevant on the day, but something could change tomorrow. But anyway, thanks very much uh, for your time. I hope some of that was of interest to you. And I'm going to hand you back to Tom now. Thanks, Tom. That's great, and uh, Audrey. And just what I've done is, um, Oh, I just know. Um, sorry, I made an error there. Um, I am posting to everyone the uh, on the chat room that address that um, <clears throat> Audrey has just given us. Audrey, I've just got two quick questions, right? And, and yes. we'll move on to to um, Larry then, but. The first question is, if, if, if a person goes on the back to work in the price allowance and, um, you know, it's, it's, as you said, first year they get 100%, then it's 75, then it's 50, I think, in year three. No, they, that was in the old scheme. It's only a two-year scheme now. It's only Thomas, two year. It's only okay. a two-year scheme now. Okay, that's good. Uh, that clarifies that. And, but they can still retain... Um, medical cards and rent allowance and stuff if they qualify, right? If they qualify, yeah. But you yeah. see, if their business is very successful, you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it is a trade-off, you know? In the early days, they're going to struggle, so... But you see, what I would say is, I mean, like in the early stages, when the person is doing their business plan, and like Larry will talk about this as well, like they work out what's the likelihood of how much you're going to earn. Now, like most businesses in the early days don't earn an awful lot of money. Do, do you know what I mean? Like, because they're getting set up and you're building your, your business. So in the early stages, people aren't, you know, likely to have a huge income. So it's not going to have a, a, a massive impact on, on what they're currently eligible for. But it's, it's as time goes on, you, you know, and mm -hmm. the, who knows, you know, 
what next year holds for any of us and things like that. So, I'm, I mean, that's just the way it is for everybody. Like anybody who's setting up a business out there now is doing it with the best of intentions and hoping that everything is going to be successful. And Audrey, when someone goes to you and, and, and you know, says they want to go on the back to work alone yes. and they get allocated a, an enterprise officer, right? Does that enterprise officer come, like, are they an entry or employee? No. Or are, they, are they provided through the local development companies? You're right, Tom. They're, they're, it's not a, it, it wouldn't be me because I wouldn't be an expert in what the businesses would be. So it would be, you know, through the local development companies that we would get somebody because they're, they're the ones that are out there that have the network of different type of um, business contacts that, you know, they need to, you know, question something with somebody or for the viability of a business opportunity, they have access to that. So that, that's something that's, you know, that I would value that from those people. And it means then, like, I'm getting, if, if I referred, somebody came to me and asked me, you know, I said, look, I have a business idea, you know, I would say that's fantastic. I'll send you to an enterprise officer. They'll talk you through all the different stages and come back to me afterwards and let me know whether it's likely to be a viable option. And the, the, the thing about it is, I mean, it's in our interest to give everybody an opportunity at it, you know, because if they're successful, that's fantastic. You know what I mean? If it doesn't work out, you know, or maybe the business idea is, maybe it's, it's not an idea for this year. It could be an idea that might, or, you know, or maybe it needs further development, you know, and it, that's a good advice as well before somebody maybe invests a lot of their money into their business and maybe it's the timing's not right for it you know so i, I do think it's 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 always worth a conversation you know what i mean and okay. i would always be um guided by what the enterprise officer would come back to me with okay and that's probably a very good way to lead into our next speaker who's larry o'neill and larry ceo of south dublin county partnership and would be one of the local development companies to whom uh, a person within their region uh, would be sent uh, to, to, to get support. So Larry, I'll hand over to you and you can maybe be explain not just what South County Dublin, uh, South Dublin County Partnership offers, but, but about what local development companies across the country might offer, because we have people here from across the country. <clears throat> Indeed, we have people here from abroad, I, I see this people from Port, as far, far away as Portugal um, are, are tuned in to us. So, so Larry, talk us through what the local partnership companies offer. Morning, Tom, um, and thank you very much for the invitation um, to, to, to participate in the webinar. Can I just say something, and I'm not being rude here, Tom, it's all about Nat Newt. Just remember those two words, and we remember the core of what we're about, Nat Newt. Um, I'd say three, Three little messages I want to give. First of all, who are South County Dublin Partnership and who are the LDCs right throughout the country as you refer to? I want to mention something about the Back to Work Enterprise Allowance and the collaboration we have with DESP and what we do there. And I want to mention something about individual placement. And eventually then, if I can get that far, I'll talk about Nat Newt. So, I mean, it's, it's the golden egg um, that we need to get to at the end of this. So Dublin County Partnership is based in, 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 uh, in, in an area of the, Do uh, the Dublin area which stretches from Ratfarnham to Luke and North and Dawkins to Britis. But we work mainly in disadvantaged areas, disadvantaged communities and disadvantaged individuals. And we make no apologies to anybody for that. Our thematics include health and wellbeing, enterprise employment, lifelong learning and community development. We manage a lot of programs for DESP, including TUS, CE, Back to Work, and about... Uh, 30 other programs for various government departments, uh, state agencies, local authorities. And the private sector is also a big part of what we do. And we have uh, very solid relationships with Roadstone, with uh, Bank of America, with Microsoft, and of course, through the Tides Foundation with Google um, for our Inspiring Futures program. Um, we're part of a national network of LDCs covering the entire country. So a bit like Gay Byrne, there's one for everybody in the audience. There is an LDC next to you. And what I would be saying to people here is knock on their doors and demand their services because that's what we're there to do is to serve people who need help. I was going to read you the mission, but I, I'm not going to say much more except that it's all social inclusion work. So if somebody is social excluded for any reason whatsoever, our job is to reverse that, to remove the barriers, ameliorate the, the, the difficulties 
and help people to get what is rightfully theirs. Um, we work in partnership with DESP, HSE, local enterprise officers. I want to mention two programs. The Back to Work Enterprise uh, Allowance Program is funded by DESP, and then I'll I, I mention IPS in, in a second, which is funded by HSE and SICAP. We operate individual placement supports for people with mental health challenges um, who wish to take up an employment or self-employment and in need of additional, additional supports. And in the past 12 months, we've dealt with just under 60 referrals and we have a current caseload of uh, approximately 20. Um, it's a highly intensive uh, piece of work that we hold our hand, we prepare CVs, we um, do mock interviews, we develop personal action plans. We wrap around services dealing with anxiety, with role playing and other basic skills. And we support the worker in, 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 with, with training of statutory training needs, such as safe pass, manual handling, HACCP. And we also provide the opportunity for work trials so you can get a placement within an employer uh, set up. And we, finally, the, the piece that's important here, and I think we need to understand in self-employment uh, self as well, we support employers. We do not desert employers when we make a placement. We'll stay with them for up to 12 months with the employee and the employer to make it comfortable and productive for people to work within that company. And I think that's a vital part of any service that you're doing in the disability field. In the Back to Work Enterprise Allowance, we help uh, people wishing to start their own business. We provide the enterprise ex uh, experience that DESP require us to do. Funny enough, DESP don't pay us to do this, but we do it anyway. Uh, and, and that's always a bone of contention. But we partner with the local uh, enterprise office. And we, we here in South Dublin, we have their mentoring panel available to us to provide expertise in taxation, finances, bookkeeping, marketing, company setup, product development, and general strategy. So there's a whole array of services available, free of charge to the client. And I have to stress this, this is free of charge and, and they only have to ask for it. And if their, their project is a suitable runner, they'll get that. We also take referrals from people who walk in off the street. So it's not just DESP because under SICAP, we actually do an awful lot more work than just DESP referrals. We process about 250 clients. I have to say that those with disabilities do not wish to identify as such. So we report very few people with disabilities using our services. But I'd also make that comment in the context that members of the traveling community, non-national citizens, uh, and indeed anybody from a cohort, including over 66s, never wish to actually celebrate that they're from that cohort or declare that. So we're dealing with people with disabilities from the traveling community, etc., as if they're, they're ordinary citizens, because that's exactly what they are. And they deserve the exact same service as everybody else. Um, I said it's all about Nat Newt, Tom, and, 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 and this is important. Uh, it's an example of what happened in Donegal, because the LDCs, there's 49 of them throughout the country. I can't stress enough that anybody who needs support should be looking at them. Or if you need support for somebody else and you're an advocate, go to your local development company. So up in Letter Kennedy, Der Derek Walker and his wife Anna uh, got involved in starting a business, mainly because Derek is clinically blind. And because of that, he couldn't get employment. So he decided to start his own business to make his own way in this world, despite all of the difficulties that he had. So he started growing wheatgrass, and from there, he started developing a wheatgrass-based uh, nutritional drink. They started out, Derek started out in his bedroom, and he had one local retail unit. That's all he had. And today, he now works out of a bespoke factory of 10,000 square feet, and he supplies Tesco, Super Value, other multiples, as well as all the local shops in County Donegal. It's, it's a marvellous story. He won the, the 2016 National ILDN Enterprise Award. Um, and, and I think what attracted the judgment team here was not his disability, his pure energy and commitment to getting his business up and running. And remember, new businesses, seven out of 10 new businesses will fail. So if we have a strike rate of 30% success, we're doing extremely well. 
And in, in conversation with Audrey the other day, she made a very valid point. Some of our responsibility is to make sure that it does not go ahead. Because people who, who are in the frame here are normally borrowing money, either from a bank, from the credit union, from family. They've got scarce resources as a, as a stands and are using those resources to, to actually fulfill their commitment. And we've got to actually say, we have a responsibility to say, hold on a second, don't do it this way. Go back to the drawing board again. And that's as big a goal for us as is reporting. We started six new businesses. Because I'll actually report, we actually dealt, dealt with four people and we decided, no, we won't proceed. I suppose the message I have is, and Derek would be very, very uh, uh, keen to say this, Nat Newt is an example of an individual who was stuck in the railway tracks and couldn't get out. And he pulled himself up with his wife. Anyone can start this journey. And there's help there from all our LDCs across the Republic. We're not just dealing on our own, we're in partnership with the state bodies, with DESP and the local Leos. So there's a huge resource that we can pull in here to the benefit of people with a disability. That's me done. Thank you very much, Thomas. Thank you, Larry. Um, Larry, what does Nat Nude stand for? I've no idea. It's just the brand of his, uh, his nutritional drink uh, from wheatgrass. And I, I, I have no idea, but I, when I was speaking about it, I used the phrase Nat Nude, and people said, what in the name of God is he at now? So it, it does sort of bring up the interest a little bit. Yeah, yeah, Larry. One of the comments coming in is is the challenge that you that that a person with a disability would face in working with the local development companies might be that um, they go through multiple case officers or multiple departments. You know that they'll have a, a main case officer, but because they need to connect with so many different agencies and departments, they finish up. Kind of finishing up with lots of people, and and, and is is that is that a challenge, or how do you resolve that? We we have only two enterprise offices in all of South County Dublin for a population of over a quarter of a million people. We're advocates for the individual who wants to go on to back to work enterprise allowance. So if they have to deal with another agency, we'll actually use our connections and our 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 contacts to help them out. So we won't leave them on their own. But uh, can I just say that the IPS? The individual placement support model is the model we will be using with anybody with disabilities who wants to come in. So we'll handhold from start to finish. And I have to, to, to compliment the staff in DESP in South County Dublin are extremely good at allowing and facilitating us to do that. Whereas maybe they could say, hold on a second, Larry, they're coming into my door now, you go away. But they don't. They actually facilitate fully the, the, the whole journey. And it is a journey. And does that mean, Larry, that a person's experience might be different elsewhere? That if they were in a different geographic location, they may get a different journey, let's put it nicely. It's, it's, it's quite possible, Tom, but, but remember, all our organisations, the 49 of them, are rooted in social inclusion. So the ethos of our, our organisation is to allow people to achieve as best they can with all of those circumstances taking in place. So we're actually set up to deal with, with cohorts of people who are disadvantaged. You know, so like here we have the Drugs Task Force, we've health and wellbeing. There's a whole range as you know yourself, Tom. And we can bring all of that to bear and to benefit the individual client. In the IPS, 20 of our clients are actually doing courses within the partnership, which is not core to the, to the, to the program at all. But mm. that's what we do. And I've noted in uh, elsewhere that there's like that the across the forty nine um, partnerships or LDCs, there are in, in excess of one hundred and eighty programs of different kinds. So there's got to be something available to you know to you if you wanna if you wanna look for support. You know there's got to be appropriate help there somewhere, right? So so I suppose what we're saying, Larry, is that. DSP have financial supports and are very conscious of you know helping people to maintain a, an income and not lose medical cards um, rent allowances travel passes which can be very difficult to, to access in the first instance 
So losing them would be a huge deal. And then, you know, if someone starts up their own business, they, like they've got the local partnerships, the local development companies to handhold them through the process. Would that be a fair? That, that, that's very, very fair. And we can provide training free of charge to the client, appropriate training. And we use here, and I know in most of the partnerships, they use all of the resources they have to actually benefit the client, no matter where the client comes from. Mm. Yeah, that's wonderful. And, because, and what I would say to people is, look, while, while, while I know there can be criticisms of, of the system and of the, the support, right? Um, let's, let's be positive and look at all of the, the stuff that is available. Right, and like it's it's anything in life. We there's always room for improvement, right? But but I think like I I I do a lot of work internationally, and in comparison to you know many other countries, the the the, the support system around startups here is is very very good, and and I would encourage people you know, to engage with the um, local development companies and with Intrio to to get started and get talking. And that's the only way, you know, of of of, of identifying your own your own um, individual journey. Uh, Larry, we'll be back to you for Q and A in a minute, but thank you so much for for for, for your contribution. That was great. And um, the final speaker is Eric Lamb, and Eric um, has created a social enterprise called Step Up Ireland. And Eric, I, we'd love to hear about you know what Step Up Ireland is doing to support people with disabilities in starting their own business in Ireland, um, the plans that you, that you, I know that you have, and, and I suppose, why did you get involved and what were your own entrepreneurial challenges in, in getting this, uh, this initiative started? Thanks very much, Tom. Yeah, so um, Step of Ireland, um, you know, basically it started in um, 2019. I, I, I uh, was working with an individual who wanted to set up a business and that's kind of the reason I'm going to go into the reason why we kind of started. Um, I was working with an individual who had a business idea. He was really passionate and skilled um, and um, he had a disability. Um, unfortunately, you know, a lot of barriers um, from within the organization um, basically said that he couldn't set up a business um, and that he wasn't able to do that. So, so that was kind of the first kind of foray into that kind of area. Um, and so I was very disheartened. He was very disheartened and I was, I was very kind of shocked. Um, and I said, you know, we need to look into something, do something for this. We need to, I need to do something. And that was kind of my call to action, I suppose. Um, and then, you know, fast forward then, I, uh, I had this idea to maybe support people with disabilities um, into self-employment. And uh, I went on to Social Entrepreneurs Ireland and they offered me um, a place on their academy program. So um, throughout that kind of experience, um, I was there for a couple of months and I had fantastic training on different areas of business. Um, because even a social enterprise, a charity, any business is is a business, and um, you know, so that was I was kind of a very big learning curve for me, um, and I'm still learning every day. Um, I suppose what we're doing at the moment um, is that you know what we want to do, and I suppose I'm more aspirational. Audrey and Larry have had some very very concrete supports, which are fantastic, and and I, I would definitely I've actually availed of some of those supports myself. So I, with the South Dublin County Partnership, um, I've made mentorship support, so they've been fantastic. So it's always important to. To, uh, there are great supports out there but for for step of ireland what we feel is that a lot of individuals are, are already and um, there's already barriers even before they can get to those supports and um, i suppose even thinking of the individual i was supporting and um, he wouldn't have had access to the internet he, he might not be able to he wasn't able to read and write and um, so it would have been a lot more difficult for him to access those supports so i suppose what we would like to do is to um, ensure that that um, entrepreneurship courses or business courses are accessible to the needs of the individual. And that's our kind of hope for the future. That's our kind of call to action for the future. Um, yeah, so, um, and I suppose like the key takeaways for setting up any um, social enterprise or any business, I, I just give some of my advice. And um, you now I have to put like a kind of warning here now, every, every situation is different. Everybody experiences different things. Um, and especially, you know, adults with disabilities, you know, they're going to have different challenges, um, just like anybody else. Um, so I suppose what I would say is, number one is have a plan. There's, there's, there's no point in uh, having a great idea. Even myself, you know, I had an idea, I want to help people, and I had absolutely no idea how to achieve that. So even if that plan is, I want to do this, but, you know, write it down on a piece of paper and, and really just start to think about it, you know. 
um, that could be a traditional business plan, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that, you know, I think we're moving away from that idea that everything has to be written into a traditional business plan and, you know, things, things are moving in a different way. You know, it can be put on a PowerPoint, it can be on a mind map, it can be written down on pieces of paper, but as, as long as you're planning it, as long as you're thinking about it in a more concrete way, you're, you're making steps towards achieving that. Um, I suppose the second thing I would say is get help. That's the number one thing that I found so important for me. Um, you know, we can't work in isolation. And oftentimes that's what, that's what a lot of individuals, individuals are doing. There's adults out there who are setting up businesses, but they're doing it kind of in isolation. And, and that can be really, really hard. And I found that hard myself because obviously I co-found, I founded um, Step of Ireland on my own. So it was very difficult. Um, but I went on Social Entrepreneurs Ireland and I had a, a network there. You know, and I networked with everybody that I met. And I basically, I think I asked everybody for information. I was I even talking to Tom in 2019. I was just like, want to meet up, you know. So it's, it's just important that you just put yourself out there and you link in with everybody. Even if you don't know what you want to say, link in anyway, you know. And it's important just to kind of have the chats and, and get to know people um, and learn, really. That's, that's a really, really key thing. I always say that um, learning is, is the most important thing. Um, as long as you're learning, you know, I don't think there's a such thing as failure. In my mind, if you're setting up a business, you're always learning, you're always gaining, you're always gaining knowledge. Um, and I think that's such a key, important message, especially in this is that, okay, like a lot of business, seven out of 10 businesses will fail, you know, um, you need to be very comfortable with that, that idea that it will fail. But if you're learning throughout the process, you know, at the end of it, even if the business doesn't succeed, you've gained so many skills, so much so many skills that could be applicable to your next business or so many skills that could be applicable to the employment market. So there's just so much there that you, you have, you know, and even for myself, I, I've gained so many skills in the last uh, two years. It's just been like, I, I, always, I feel it like no matter what happens, I think it's, it's a fantastic opportunity. Um, yeah. And I always just remember like to talk to your customers, to know, like find out what they want and give it to them. That's simple. And I'll just keep it at that. I won't go into too much, but you really need to find out what, people want what people need and how can you provide that service to them and um, so it's really important that you talk to experts that you talk to your customers on the floor and um, oftentimes and even myself you know we're all guilty of it we come up with these solutions but we don't actually consult the people that will be taking part in the solutions and that that's very very you know indicative of the whole disability sector is that often, oftentimes we don't consult people that you know the decisions are about and um, for myself like I, I've, a, I've a team of volunteers who are fantastic and they have first-hand experience of uh, the challenges um, that, that disabilities have, you know. So they've been great insights for me. Um, I'm not an expert and I never, never, I never claim to be, but I always try to surround myself with people who I feel are um, and learn from others and ask others and constantly revise and adapt your services or your product. Um, yeah, and number one then is just to be kind to yourself because it's a really tough journey, you know. Um, and oftentimes, you know, there's so many extra additional barriers for people with disabilities and they need to realize that, yeah, things are going to be very, very tough, but always be kind to yourself. And remember, you know, if you don't get, if you set goals for the week and they're not achieved and um, don't be hard on yourself if they're not achieved, just, just realize that, you know, next week I want to do better and I'm going to work harder, but at the same time you need to be achievable and manageable. Um, and I suppose that's really it. I mean, I'm, I'm more of the aspirational speaker here now, but um, yeah, like, what we really want in Step of Ireland is to provide um, entrepreneurship courses and we want to do that um, online um, given the current climate, but we want to do that like accessible to the needs of the individuals that are using it and, and led by them. And that, that's really, really core to our mission. Um, yeah, and we'd love to collaborate with as many organizations and many departments as we can. And, and like, there's so many fantastic organizations doing great things out there. And I just think that you know, we all work together. I think that we can finally just make that a reality. And I, I suppose from my mind, um, we just need to walk the walk now. We just need to get it going. You know, that's what I think anyway. That's all I have to say. Thanks, Tom. Excellent, Eric. Eric, just before you go, the um, if I recall correctly, you have plans for a, a forthcoming event in, in late November, all going well? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, thanks for reminding me there. I have it written down, but I, of course I glanced glance completely over yeah so we have a networking event that we want to do um for entrepreneurs or anybody who even has an idea and if you're not sure if you have an idea don't worry come along as well because you might you might find that in being in that environment you know that sparks that 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 idea in you and um, we'll be just waiting there for you that's that's pretty much we think so we're hoping a networking event 
Um, if you go to our website, www.stepwaring.ie, all our Facebook socials are on the bottom there. All the information will be on our, on our social medias. And Eric, if you wouldn't mind, um, when plans are finalized and you have a link, if you send it to me, I'll happily share it with the audience. So I'll send it out to the email list of all participants today so that they, they can link into it as well. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, and there was, there was uh, two things that have been raised there. One, the notion of teams, I completely agree with. And there's so much evidence out there that tells us that firms with multiple founders, okay, you know, two or more people starting the business are far more likely to be successful than firms founded by individuals. Um, so, and it makes sense, right? Because you're not on your own, okay? You've got other ideas, you, got, you can bounce off you know, other people, you've got other expertise, you've got other sources of funding. Like, there's so many reasons. So that point that you made about teams, I would absolutely fully support that. Um, and the other thing that you talked about, which previous speakers also talked about was, um, look, uh, not every idea is worth pursuing. Okay, so like if someone says, you know, I can't see you making money in this, right, on a sustainable basis, and I don't think you should proceed, you know, that in itself is a positive decision, right? It, it, it's like, okay, don't, don't do it. It's not good for you, right? But yeah. equally, there's a lot of learning by doing something. It doesn't work out, but I've learned a lot from it, and I can try again. So the uh, we have a problem with sti in Ireland with the stigma of failure, but I think that's beginning to go. And I think people now see it more as a learning experience. Would you agree with that? 100%. And I suppose even for myself, um, only recently I did a financial projection for the next three years, and that was an eye opener for me. You know, I mean, as a social enterprise, our mission is all about preparing a non profit, but um, obviously we do need to have some sort of monetary support in order to continue and to, to actually get going. So it was, it was a massive learning experience for me. And I think that if a lot of people sat down and did a five, three year financial projection, they might find, okay, this isn't actually going to be a viable business, but I know how to do a financial projection now. I know how my next business that, you know, let's see, or, or I might realize that I need to uh, change the business. I might need to uh, tweak the idea. I might need to offer additional services in order to make it viable. You know, and there's things like that, that's just, really really small things that just kind of you learn as you go um, and i think it's, it's really important that you know we even if the business isn't you know people don't think that it could it could succeed um i think the learning is always important you know yeah and just for clarification because we've had a question in the networking event in november is an online event isn't that yeah. right yeah it'll be online zoom similar to the event here today and it'll be an online zoom event and we'll also have another theme on it as well our, our team uh, my team I say our team, my team, and um, they're working on um, looking at marketing yourself. So that's that's kind of more like a social media online side of things, and that will be um, as well as the networking event. Excellent, excellent. And so, can I encourage people? We've we've got about ten minutes left um, to to submit questions, please. Um, excuse me for kind of leaning in towards my laptop. Um, 